You know, super close to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a treat. It was a surprise treat. I'm like, thank you so much. So <laughs> All right, I'm diving in with my question. Okay. My one, Hello. One, Hello. My one big question. Hello. Yes. Yes. Overall, as a piece of television, as a piece of drama, as a piece of sci-fi, what do you feel Fringe's greatest accomplishment has been? Fringe's greatest accomplishment? Yes. I think that, um, <laughs> this is not just because I love doing that, <laughs> but I think when we, um, when we ended season two, and then when we began season three, and when, uh, uh, do you know, and when our, our production team, our showrunners, our writers, our network, our studio embraced wholeheartedly the fact that we were going to spend half the season in the third year of a show that wasn't till the back in an alternate universe was kind of like one of the bravest things I think that we could do. And at that point I was like, oh, I'm damn proud to be a part of this. I think that that was like, I think that that was just unbelievable that they did that and committed to it. Didn't just give you a little taste, but went, we're going here, so come, you know, or not. Right. How does, cool. it, how does it feel to see the end in sight now? It feels extraordinarily luxurious, to tell you the truth, that we get to actually start the final season knowing that it's our final season. Because so often you, you, you walk into it and, and you don't know, and you sort of like, I don't know, there's like a whole lot of stuff that goes on in your head. But um, I think for all the departments, for the writers and for the cast and for the production, there's like, you know, there's no excuse. Like, we'll be putting our whole heart into it. and. and and not taking anything for granted. Do you hope that's pleasure or do you hope it's sort of unanswered or...? Um, I think because it's the end, I hope that there's closure. But they're so funny because like closure and resolution are two very, very different <laughs> things. And so I guess I should think about it. Do I want resolution or do I want closure? And maybe actually, maybe for Fringe I would choose resolution and not closure. <laughs> I don't know. For my life I'd rather closure. <laughs> what about the um, difference in season four? You are now not in an alternate universe, you're in an alternate timeline. I know. And playing, I think this is the third or fourth version of Olivia with whatever different set of memories. I started to count one time and I gave up. So <laughs> good. <laughs> so my question is, the first half of season four, you're playing alternate timeline Olivia, but then at some point, you end up playing a combination of old timeline, new timeline. I wish I knew where that when we started. <laughs> I, I don't know say, where we're gonna go. That I don't even know. <laughs> I was gonna say, how did you separate that in your head? Well, we didn't have the time. I mean, John and I sat down for a minute and went. So okay. Peter never existed. What? Okay, how? And then you're just like, oh my god, the street, like, if you start pulling, just like it's gonna just unravel. But I didn't know until I wrote it that this was actually the real timeline. And I, I should say that too, it's too late now because it's done. But I would have really liked to have known that because I would have done quite a few things differently, actually, had I known that this was the Olivia and that there was like a void in Olivia as opposed to it just being a completely different timeline. What? Well, I think I would have played that. I think I would have made it a little more. I'm like a fan of magic and mystical stuff. I mean, I love sci-fi too, but I do love mystical magic movies. And I think that there could have been something really mystical and magical in that. Like, I don't know, I would have added some ticks or something where little thing, I would have been very conscious of what, of things that Peter had touched, or Peter had done, and I would have played him in my mind a little bit more as like a, a haunt, I would have been, I would have made it a little more haunting. But I didn't know, I thought we were just going to go back. We did too. Good, we were all on the same page. <laughs> I thought it was the real time. <laughs> really? I was arguing with people the oh, entire season about you. that. <laughs> I was like, no, it's gotta be, it's gotta be. Good on we you. had a banana bed, we did a first podcast. Right. We had a banana bed. I thought it was a whole new universe that, that was going on. He thought it was a new timeline. Yeah. I made bananas. Oh, really? Yeah, There's how many? <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't work. <laughs> As the central character of a show that's more than a little complicated and intricate, what has been the biggest challenge for you as for playing Olivia and making the character quite so vivid in life? That's so sweet of you. <laughs> um, like the greatest challenge, like keeping the things in the Just, I mean, with the whole show, I mean, you created a really interesting, different character. And 
what, like, what was the challenge in actually creating that character and keeping her going and sort of keeping true to the character as she went? You know what? I think that this is the first time I've ever done anything like this and anything this long too. And so um, the biggest thing I think for me was like learning how to, learning how to make the TV work for you. And because and and I didn't know that. And it's so funny because you watch like I, I mean I watched John on the start and Josh too, who both have much more experience than I do. <laughs> And it's only like, you know, it was like maybe a year ago or two years ago, I was like, oh my God, that's totally what they did. And they learned how to, not hijack, it's that, I don't mean hijack, but they learned how to kind of subtly push their, not their agenda, because that sounds negative. I mean, this is a compliment, it's like a positive thing. They, they learn how to kind of like bring the bits that they want to bring or how to plant seeds a little bit better. And I didn't have that skill. But um, I think what I, what I, what I then, and again, and it's like the ultimate universe I keep talking about, <laughs> but only because it was like, okay, I'm just going to jump, like jump, and then that, and then with the bell stuff too, I'm like, well, I'm just going to jump, because the worst yes. thing that can happen is that people are going to go, oh my god, that was so terrible, and it's one episode, go, like, move on, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, and so this season, I haven't had Olivia to myself for a while, like, I, just, I haven't had her, like, just her and I, 100%, all my heart, focused on her for a couple of years. And I think that instead of like the morning, well, I've set this up or set that up, blah, 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 I'm just going to like go, let's just make her who I want her to be. Because I don't think that, she's, that she isn't there yet. She's not, she's not who I really want her to be. And so that's my personal challenge for this season. No matter what I get given, <laughs> I'm going to just make her who I want her to be. So that then when we end, I feel like I've done her justice, you know? I just, I just still feel like I just have it right. Thank you. 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 I'm sorry I have coffee for <laughs>